The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we love to come to you at this time. So what do we have going on today? Well, we're down a little bit. Now they're trying to ramp it back up. Uh, we're down, you know, we're up one point on the S&P cash. Um. But again, I think everybody is so way out on the tips of their skis for Microsoft after the bell tonight that they do not care. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got uh, kind of probably a quiet period until we get to those earnings. But certainly we can see what's going to happen tomorrow and, uh, and get prepared. My guess, uh, when we look at options, uh, they continue to show uh, kind of weakness in, eh, where is that at? Come on. There you are. Okay. T. FT. And is that right? That's for Wednesday. So we can draw that. Uh, take a look at Microsoft. This is what the options curve looks like. Although the premiums uh, for options expiration or i mean for uh options expiration tomorrow shows about five dollars higher and lower uh yesterday tomorrow's uh is a big bet uh, that it could get down to possibly 128 on a miss now uh last night or this morning not exactly sure which one sap which is kind of the microsoft of europe came out with earnings and it was a not received well. Uh, we'll take a quick look at that. A uh, huge gap down um, from about 135 to about 125.61 for the low today. Uh, is it as bad at, my, at Microsoft as it is in Germany? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, but I think these are very similar businesses. Uh, SAP kind of the Microsoft of Europe. We don't hear about it much because they don't try to do much over here. Uh, but certainly uh, that is a little foretelling in that uh, space. Uh, let's see what else we have going on here. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, what was it? Uh, so, uh, what were the other ones out this morning? Do you want to say eh, before the bell, uh, UNH. U and H um, also put a little bit of downside action. It's repaired itself a little, uh, but the uh, forecast wasn't all that exciting. Uh, again, fairly narrow ranges for most of the stocks reporting. Morgan Stanley down a little yesterday, up a little today, but doesn't look to me like there's any mojo left to really start pushing that. Uh, Honeywell, H O N, another one out this morning. Um, up a little bit after a fairly bad day yesterday, but uh, forecast is still uh, at tepid at best for these. What else do we have? Uh, to, to do what I wanted to look at. Oh, uh, again, of course, uh, after the bell tonight, we've got Microsoft and Intuitive Surgical, ISRG. Uh, this sector kind of iffy, uh, mostly because... Probably the stock closest to this, I-L-N-M, uh, Illumina blew up on earnings. And these are very, I, I Illum, is it N N? I think it's I L. yeah. Uh, Illumina blew up just last week on earnings. Uh, but these are both medical device manufacturers, Illumina and DNA, and uh, Intuitive Surgical and Robotic Surgery. 
but I think they're in, uh, in basically similar uh, kind of businesses, and that is that uh, they make items that hospitals buy, and eventually all the hospitals that can afford it are going to have them, and the sale rate will be significantly lower. Uh, Illumina made a lot of DNA sequencing equipment, and eventually you just keep selling, 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 and suddenly you kind of satisfy the market. Maybe your sales are 70% next year of what they are this year. But uh, for me, Intuitive Surgical looks like one of those kind of companies that could saturate the market fairly quickly. Uh, in the tennis shoe business, a really big shoe, HKX, also after the bell was Skechers. Uh, this one seems to pop around fairly uh, uh, big on earnings. It's back into this huge gap down of April 18th that had 10 and a half million shares uh, into it today with about 2.2 million shares. And I think the best day you had in the last five is about 2.75 million shares. So a lot of these stocks are just set up very dangerously. Uh, not a lot of short interest in most of these stocks uh, in the market. Uh, we also have Capital One in the financial sector out after the bell. Uh, where's that at? Did I not pull that up? I don't think. Where's it at here? There it is. Okay. Oh, got two minutes left. Okay. Uh, that looked fairly decent, but uh, yeah, there's just not a lot there there. Uh, let's see. Wanted to get that for the break. Uh, also wanted to uh, talk about a little bit of history today. So we'll start that. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is just a little bit of history repeating this day, if I can find it. Uh, Robert Noyce, Andy Grove, and Gordon Moore incorporate uh, Intel into Santa Clara, California to build microprocessors. The first microprocessor, the 4004, was released in 1971 for use in calculators. IBM's choice of Intel 88 process for use in the IBM BC led to Intel's emergence as the premier manufacturer of processes, processors still to this day. And of course, they make a absolute monster amount of money and they mostly focusing on the server business and high-end PCs uh, has led to AMD kind of catching up on the lower tier of the market. Uh, but you know what? They sell one big uh, uh, server for, you know, some cloud service, and it's like selling a 1,000 PCs. So I don't know. You'd have to look at the books to see whether or not uh, not being as aggressive on the low side is important as the future rolls out. Of course, Gordon Moore is the guy that where they talk about Moore's Law. That is that every 18 months, everything doubles in speed and capacity and halves in price. We've seen that since 1968. Of course, now we have things that rival. In fact, uh, I saw it yesterday uh, in the news that someone had written the software for the lunar lander and could run 100,000 lunar landers on his smartphone. Anyway, we'll be right back after this. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Um, let's take a quick peek here and see what we have for the indexes. Yeah, we're up two points. No big deal. Dow's off uh, 61. Nasdaq's off well, six. Of course, uh, the big uh, mover in the Nasdaq was Netflix. Uh, we talked about it a little bit yesterday. Uh, it was either this quarter or next quarter where this thing was going to take a dive. We talked about uh, how expensive uh, com uh, the uh, content had become. They made a few comments about uh, the cost of uh, getting uh, decent talent had exploded uh, as other companies had got into the business. Um, it's never been a better time to maybe a movie maker uh, if you wanted to get into the business. It's also probably one of the hardest times to get into a movie, uh, be a movie maker if you want to make a lot of money. You can make a lot of you can make a lot of movies and make some money, but certainly the days of the uh, directors getting big cuts is probably over. Uh, if the Netflix effect continues in Hollywood. Uh, I had some emails after the show yesterday uh, asking me if, uh, they, if what I thought about uh, the potential for uh, some of these other companies that are trying to sell uh, themselves now, like in the cable area, cable space. And I know that CNN is for sale for half the price it was a year ago. Um, same thing with MSNBC. Uh, any of these, the only one, I guess, I don't know if Fox is for sale or not. I haven't heard that. Uh, but certainly, uh, short of Fox, the almost all of those, including CNBC and uh, a lot of the deep cable stations, um, are way down, even from last year. And I don't know why I would even want to be involved in the broadcast industry as an investor uh, going forward. And certainly Netflix is, is in it, too. And it's just basically where you could buy, you know, where they were getting young up-and-comer directors for cheap and being able to buy scripts for cheap. Those days are over. Of course, they spent a huge amount of money going after foreign markets with uh, the reality of small payback. Now, maybe they just put a lot of those early movies in, uh, but uh, I, you know, I, I've made it no secret that 
a year ago on Christmas, so I'm oh, I'm a year and a half into not having Netflix anymore. I just really got tired of uh, the content. I didn't think that there was a lot in there, a lot of old movies, uh, most of which I'd already seen. So there wasn't a whole lot there. There were a few series that were really nice, but uh, I ended up really liking what was on Amazon Prime a whole lot more than I did on Netflix, so I just dropped Netflix. And again, Netflix it probably weren't, uh, eh, let me put it this way, family friendly uh, on some of the stuff they did. Of course, got caught their hands uh, in with uh, a little bit of child porn. Uh, and uh, I think it was from in their effort down in Argentina. Um, so they, they kind of give me the willies. And of course, uh, some of the people involved with Netflix, uh, eh, not quite uh, ready to show up at the uh, Council for uh, uh, Anti-American Activities in the 50s. But I think you can probably say that they're leaning that way or in the parlance of the Cold War talk, fellow travelers. Um, so I, they kind of give me a little bit of the willies. But what can you say? Again, these companies now that are closing below the nine-day moving average or the three-by-three three displaced moving average, let's see what this looks like on the just a traditional uh, nine-day moving average. Again, not that much different uh, when we look at uh, Netflix. But once all these stocks now pop below, uh, they get a bit of an acceleration uh, back down to support. And you blew through all the support uh, down to $320 this morning. Uh, a lot of people are just saying it's a one-time event, uh, a lot of cheerleading on CNBC. I think you've opened up a, a fairly good opportunity. I'm going to say 80% opportunity. This hits $280. And probably after it hits that, you've got maybe now a 40% opportunity of it hitting the $231 low from September, or excuse me, December 36. I don't think that any of these companies long term has much of a moat uh, to go around. And of course, even HBO, we talked about that yesterday. What are they going to replace Game of Thrones with? There's always a, a, a these um, people in the in the movie business generally tend to be, have a hot hand for a little while and a cold hand for a long time. That's one of the reasons why I tend to stay out. Uh, along with the fact that almost everything involved uh, with Hollywood ends up having uh, the books either uh, gently roasted or completely burned to a crisp. So you always have to worry about uh, uh, the sharp pencils in Hollywood being nothing more than a big scam where they eh, they write all everything they can off and then tell you you've got nothing. Uh, it's more than uh, than the uh, than usual of the case. Uh, da, 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 terrestrial radio. <laughs> um, terrestrial radio is not making any money whatsoever uh, with the exception of some talk radio stations during the day now. There's just not much to it other than that. Um, anyway, we're going to look at uh, AMD here. We talked about Intel's birthday today. Uh, AMD also adding to the fire for Microsoft after the bell. Uh, <laughs> uh, after the bell tonight uh, is closing below uh, the nine-day moving average. Just go back to the three-by-three. Three. I like that better. Um, so you do have kind of a weakness. Almost all of these, as we've said, once they close below it, they go right back to support. Uh, on AMD, that's uh, about 29 and a half bucks. Uh, Intel had some news uh, today directly going after NVIDIA for machine learning. And actually, NVIDIA is still holding up around this $172 range where they hit today. But again, about half the volume they had on July 1st at $173.95. Uh, so there isn't just much. Um, we've got some huge storms here right now uh, that are just hitting, and I can hear them rattling the windows. So if we lose you, know that it's probably not directly the Internet's fault or uh, the deep state trying to keep me off the radio. Uh, it may just be a weather issue here for the engineer. 
Uh, <laughs> marrying company's bookkeeper's friend. Oh, did you say, okay, well, we'll have to hear about that. <laughs> Always the way it works. Um, Bed Bath and Below, uh, still no sign of finding any kind of low. It is down to 974 today. I just thought that was interesting, but uh, no sign out here that anything better is happening. CBOE uh, back up to its previous highs uh, in a fairly bearish signal. The November 5th high at 114.80 at 1.2 million shares. Uh, so far today, uh, we're challenging that with 218,000 shares. A few days ago, as we were up in this area, 506,000 shares. Just not a lot of use as we get up. We'll be back in a Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And when we come back, coupons.com. Uh, this has been a parabolic move since 83 bucks up to 146.35 still no real signal that this thing has decided to uh, uh, tap out but uh, this is certainly one you want to look at it's got two decent gaps that are open now uh, ideally if you got the third gap you could pull the trigger short on that one uh, CSX of course had earnings out yesterday and you know blew up again kind of weak on transportation uh, and it hit the IYT, which we'll look at here fairly quick. 
Um, that, of course, closed below uh, the nine day yesterday. It's still below the three by three today. And as long as it does, it's in a sell mode. You're going to need it to crack back above it. I don't think it's going to, especially if we get some bad news from Microsoft tonight. And it won't be the end of the world news from Microsoft, but my guess is that they will not show positive gains from last quarter. Um, just a few things starting to flatten out. Now let's see what else is on my list of stuff. Expedia, we've been waiting for this one to uh, get up to a high, give a sell signal. It's had fairly decent uh, energy off this May 20th low, uh, but it's going up against probably some of the most intense uh, resistance at 139, which is the last high going back to June 27th of 2018. Now let's go here on a longer scale. Uh, this blew up and lost a huge amounts of money going back to October 27th of 2017 and down on 21 million shares. As I said, you know, we're tapping back into that. Um, you know, we even tried with 7 million shares back on July 27th of 2018 and didn't make it. We're in with a whole lot less volume now. This looks to me like um, Lurch's right shoulder. Um, so that's pretty pretty big right shoulder out here. Uh, but you got a lot of movement. Uh, any kind of weakness in the general market uh, and, of course, transportation, uh, we could see Expedia move its next big move lower. I'm trying to remember. I just can't remember at the moment um, what the symbol is for um, it's bookings.com now, right? Book, yeah, booking holdings, BKNG. I hate it when they uh, change a symbol. You get used to it. It fits like a glove, and that's it. Um, Booking.com, of course, kind of blew up a bit. Uh, this is still holding out that it may try to reach its high of 1952, which is a February 27th high. Uh, but the energy is not very good coming off the May 31st low. Uh, but it doesn't look like we've got any signal on this one. Booking seems to only move on earnings, and uh, at least predictably. Uh, and, of course, the last couple earnings have come out and been rather disastrous. But, then again, everybody goes right back to buying it. So who knows about that? Uh, FBIO. Uh, okay. I don't see much in this. Let's see. Fizz. F-I-Z. I was waiting to see whether this one could possibly make a low in here. You got uh, the June 27th low at $40.05 at one and a quarter million shares. Today we're down in this range with 200,000 shares. Of course, this has come off $124. Um, generally, when you get down here, you start seeing uh, volume finally lighting, lightening up. Uh, what I would like in this one is when it does end up bottoming out, which may take the rest of the summer, uh, $40 to $65, uh, or looks like maybe even 66 bucks, looks like where this could bounce to on just a uh, dead cat bounce after this thing does consolidate a little bit. But uh, I'm looking forward to this one maybe late August or September. Uh, but I'm not really a big believer that everybody's given up Coca-Cola. They may have had for a while, but uh, yeah, kind of like cigarette smokers, they'll be back. Uh, yeah, let's see. Anyway, uh, give this one a little bit of time. Uh, but if it can hold $40 for a few weeks and it looks like distribution, I mean, uh, accumulations coming in, uh, this one may be a nice one for a ride to about 65 bucks. Uh, Finistar, F-N-S-R. Let's see how some of these, just going sideways on this one, uh, since uh, the big spike back on the 1st of July, and you've done nothing since then. There's a lot of stocks like that, too. Um, what else did we have out here? Uh, GDX. Um, certainly, everybody chasing gold stocks fairly heavily. So you got to wait for that huge potential retrace. Uh, question about this one is where would it come back to? Man, you would love it on light volume at 24 bucks. 
I don't know if it gets back there, but you certainly would like it. Um, a lot of these are just parabolic. GSM, especially metals, nothing moving in that one. Uh, we talked about alumina already. Uh, how about Mattel? Little bounce off the low. Still has a huge high volume low on June 3rd that needs to be retested. So you're going to get another uh, swipe at that one. But of course, pretty good chance this thing's going to run into Christmas, at least some or a little. Uh, and, you know, if you just got back up to the previous high of 17 bucks, uh, that's almost an 80% move in a stock. So again, this is another one that I'll be keeping an eye on through the end of the summer. Uh, da, 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 da. 3M, so far just a dead cat bounce. You need a retest of 159.32. Don't see a lot in that. Marvel, uh, one of the few out here pushing the highs very hard. You had 15 million shares and 17 million shares in previous highs at this dollar amount. Uh, the last couple of days, though, um, not doing much. 7 million shares so far today. You had 10 million shares yesterday. But again, yeah, I mean, we're talking about fairly light volume uh, unless we see something come out of these things fairly soon and we get some volume in these. These all look like potential failures. Uh, Netgear continues to kind of move sideways, so just slightly higher. As I said, this is another great stock that if it can bottom out around 25 bucks, has a lot of uh, potential in the 5G sector, just uh, working with new Wi-Fi standards for the home. Uh, but again, it's going to take a little bit of time and a lot of patience to catch this right. Uh, but uh, 24 bucks to 40 bucks is a possibility on this one if it can hold these levels. Uh, Payosity, we've been talking about waiting for this to close back below uh, a nine-day or three-day displaced moving average. Uh, no such uh, signal on that one today, other than the fact we've got very light volume, just 170,000 shares. Uh, Quervo, Q-R-V-O, symbol on this uh, play in the uh, smartphone space, coming back up into tremendous resistance. Um, right now we've got about 771,000 shares. You're looking for in the neighborhood of uh, three, maybe four million shares to make a signal that it's gonna be able to go back through that huge gap down that goes back to May 16th. That's it. Give me a call at 877-748. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. We're up a little bit. We're up eight points on the S&P cash. As I said, I think everybody's uh, just once again expecting Microsoft to pull the market higher. I think they're probably going to be in maybe a little bit of a surprise after hours today. But, you know, maybe everybody just decides to buy everything else. Uh, just down four on the Dow, up 15 on the NASDAQ. Now Russell's up three. So uh, buy what – it doesn't matter how small the pullback is. we got to buy it. But um, – my guess is that this is a one-day solution uh, running into Microsoft where um, maybe a second day of selling in things like Netflix and Microsoft might put more pressure on the market. Uh, we continue to see a, a lot of downside uh, protection in stocks like Microsoft and Apple, uh, but I don't see anything that says uh, that we close any higher than we're at right now uh, come tomorrow at the – Four o'clock. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, Xilinx, I've been watching some of these others in the SMHs uh, and whether or not they can get back and fill their gap. Uh, today, Xilinx is up on about 2 million shares going back in uh, to uh, April 25th when this was down on 24 million shares. So, you know, just not a lot of juice. You had at a height this week of about 4.25 million shares. Now, could you get back up to 127 or 128? I think you can, uh, but this does look like a possibility of a fairly large ABC on the way down. Take a quick look at uh, the SMHs, and again, they're back up into this gap. Um, last time we were up here on the 1st of July, we had 9 million shares. Uh, today, we've got about 3.7 million shares. That goes back to a gap down on the 6th of May, that had just about, well, shy of 7 million shares. So just not a whole lot going on uh, in those either. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, yeah, there wasn't much going on in uh, AMZN. Um, again, you did have kind of a gap down today after it broke the three-day yesterday, and we're starting to see some of that kind of action now uh, in the general market. But again, I think everybody, it, the knee-jerk is buying the dip here, but I think it's premature. And I uh, think that we could look at somewhere around 29.75 to 29.50 for expiration tomorrow. Okay, what else do we have? I wanted to look at at before the end of the day. Um, someone wanted me to look at Micro, or Micro, Micron, uh, and uh, they're back up uh, and holding. Uh, but this is one of these stocks that could easily do a double repo. If it does the double repo pattern, uh, the completion of the pattern is going right back to where this started, and that would be around 34 bucks. So you are holding a three by three today. You're not doing it on much in the way of volume. You would have liked to have seen something around 40 million shares. Uh, we've got about 20, and a little shy of 20 right now, uh, going back into a 26 million share high. 
Uh, but again, what you would like to see is what you see today, which is a close above the three by three, a close below, and uh, uh, or excuse me, the next close below, pull the trigger on this, if you think it still looks bearish. And see what else we have out of here. Um, someone wanted me to look at Intel. This hasn't even been able to get close uh, to this huge gap down from April 26. I don't think it's going to. Again, we talked, was it this week? I got to sneeze. Hey! <laughs> Well, well, we were so inter uh, uh, interrupted by my s s uh, s sneezing. Um, we certainly uh, had seen this. Now, I don't know if it gets back up here. AMD uh, pressuring it on the, uh, uh, certainly on the uh, processor side in the consumer space, not on the server space. And, you know, the, they're kind of getting ready to go and get in uh, NVIDIA's grill uh, with their own video card. Again, we said that, you know, they did have some good news today on a chip that they can sell into the server space. Uh, and they're really now just getting uh, the Altera acquisition uh, put together uh, so that it makes a compelling, especially in the server space, a compelling offering for things like video compression. Uh, on chip and others, but man, it's fairly weak. I would much rather suspect uh, that you get a retest of this May 23rd low before you actually fill this gap and go higher at uh, $51. But uh, not a fan of Intel until they get a new CEO. I, I suspect that they're going to end up like Microsoft, and that is going sideways for a very long time until they get somebody new in the CEO's position. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Skype is ducking. Well, I don't know about that. Um, doo -doo -doo. Hopefully it's okay. Um, maybe it's that helicopter that just went over. Okay, I got a question on... China, and what I like to look on China at China with is yin and yang, and I don't see anything out here. Again, a lot of triangle patterns on each side of the market with these. Uh, I think it's Y A N G is the other side of this, uh, but you know you got seven days of sideways on this, so there isn't a lot going on. I think Yang's the other one uh, that we look at. And it's basically the same thing. I don't see why it would be that much difference. But I don't see anything going on here right in China, at least for these directional ETFs and highly leveraged ETFs other than sideways right now. Not a lot of volume, not a lot of push. So I don't think that there's much there. Uh, question on DOCU, D-O-C-U. I think this one's got a, a fairly good long-term um, move in it, higher. Uh, the question is just how long it needs to consolidate out before profits start picking up. Fairly recent IPO in the last year. Uh, got down to 3506 on November 20th in 2018. They had a high of 5962 back on March 15th. Uh, now, again, a lot of lower highs and higher lows for the last few months, and I don't think you can make anything out of those until they actually uh, break out one way or the other, and then generally I take the other side of it. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. We'll wrap up the show with the last segment. Still have plenty of time to give me a call at 877-927-6648.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. Um, we were talking about DocuSign when we left, but got a couple more emails asking me to outline what it was going on. I just don't think that uh, Microsoft's going to hit its whisper numbers, MSFT. Well, it has closed below the 3x3 three three over the last few days. It's back into this gap at 135. Uh, but there's not a lot new. I think they put a lot in uh, to the previous earnings statements. Um, I don't see anything that says that it's the end of the world, but I do see that I wouldn't be surprised to see it at 135 to 125 tomorrow, and that's just back to support. Uh, but you haven't really had a lot of energy in this thing uh, going back for almost a month now, and you've got three gaps um, that need to be filled. Uh, the lowest of that one is 120, and it's not a, a compelling three-gap play, so I'm not going to short it, uh, but I am set up... Um, thinking that there would be significant moves uh, in uh, the market to the downside. As I said, somewhere, uh, it looks like today, I'll know better tonight, but somewhere around uh, 29.75 uh, to 29.50 for expiration of tomorrow. Now, maybe that changes today. Maybe people got the word, but too many of these stocks uh, that are out here that aren't in the top, you know, 50% of the NASDAQ, which is six stocks, uh, 
the rest of them just don't seem to be bouncing with it and that is what makes me think uh, that there's a bigger game afoot so we'll keep an eye on that uh, anyway as we said uh, volume not very exciting so far about 4.3 billion shares as we go into the close of the show. Hang on for Tom O'Brien. He'll talk us through earnings tonight after 4 o'clock. And I'll be back here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. And, of course, to remind you to sow when you can, not when you have to. <laughs>